the concept that emergency medicine, you're a jack of all trades and a master of none. It's not really true. You're a jack of all trades and a master of all. We are the people that restart people's hearts in the emergency department. We are the people that get you with your surgical diagnosis off to the operating room. We are the master diagnosticians of the system and we are the people that help navigate that system and play that system like a symphony. The health system now is so complex that our role is really, as well as dealing with the very acutely ill, uh, it's really acting as that uh, safety net for the whole healthcare system. I think there's no doubt that the healthcare system in Canada has been impacted in a way that you can only say the standard of care that we meet is so much higher. That translates directly into patient outcomes, patient satisfaction, and provider satisfaction in what you do and the rewards you get for doing it. And I'm not talking financial, I'm talking about why you pick something that you can clearly make a difference and want to continue working towards that end. I truly honestly do believe that it's an absolute privilege to be allowed to be present and helping somebody uh, during their darkest hours. When I was a resident, the thing you like most about emergency medicine is you get to do things, you get to do procedures, you get to save lives. Um, and that disappears with time. Do I still like to do things? Yes, but in fact I find that uh, the thing I like most about emergency medicine is the patients I take care of and my ability to take away their fear and my ability to let them go home satisfied they can take care of their kids or satisfied they can take care of themselves. And so it's the human relationships I have that I love most about emergency medicine. When I first started, the emergency room, room if you can call it that, consisted of six little cubicles, tiny rooms, um, with one little room where we wrote our charts up, and, um, and that was it. When I was a resident in Montreal, it was very primitive, uh, with just a couple of rooms for uh, what was alleged to be a busy trauma center. It was a tiny place. It was uh, a labyrinth of rooms uh, without great designation for patients who were really sick and yet it functioned very well. Staff uh, had the challenge of dealing with the physical constraints, but uh, they were all enthusiastic and it was great fun. The emergency room or the casualty department was typically run by untrained people, uh, either interns rotating through the hospital or by dysfunctional physicians who couldn't really get a job anywhere else. But the nurses were excellent, probably kept the place running because they, they were there uh, permanently. They were experienced nurses and, and I think uh, they really helped a lot of the young doctors who had very little idea what they were actually doing. And um, they just kind of would see a patient, refer them to surgery, refer them to medicine, refer them to someone else. And I think that was the state of emergency medicine in the 70s. For one reason or another, in the years leading up to the late 1970s, the glass was half full for that segment of care. And it just looked like an area where one could put one's energy and time and really make a difference to outcomes. There was a core group of very dedicated physicians that had uh, phenomenal expertise in, in assessing and treating patients with a, acute illness and, and making decisions um, promptly. And, and it was that core group of physicians that really developed um, the presence of emergency medicine, uh, encouraged others like me to pursue that discipline and really developed a level of respect amongst our other colleagues, both family medicine and specialty colleagues, that we really had a, a key role in interacting with them and delivering patient care. All across the country, uh, I think if you went to Vancouver, you would find a group of physicians who are very proud that in fact it was some of the older people there that were the fathers of emergency medicine in Canada. And if you went to Calgary or Ottawa or Toronto or Halifax, you'd have um, you know, local heroes there as well who were the fathers of emergency medicine. So I think it's something that kind of um, came out of the ground relatively at the same time all across the country uh, and at the beginning I think it was groups of people who probably didn't have any training but gained skills on the job, uh, became better, influenced interns and residents to take it up 
Uh, so these pioneers uh, were a bit older than me. They had the vision and I guess I was the young starry-eyed eMERGE doctor who benefited from their, their efforts to have a national recognition of the field. So I'm certainly uh, thankful to them for doing that. Back in the uh, late 70s and early 80s, we uh, had to negotiate with both the Royal College and the College of Family Physicians. Both wanted a piece of emergency medicine and the new specialty that was coming. Uh, the cooperation between the two was difficult. And so we had to sort of jump into bed with both of them, if you will, to be able to justify that we uh, were something special that needed some support, not only in communities, but uh, in terms of training emergency physicians, certifying emergency physicians, and, and forming a new specialty. So the challenge was being able to understand what the mandate of the College of Family Physicians was to train family docs to have some expertise in emergency medicine, versus the Royal College, who had the mandate to train emergency physicians to be more academic research administration based. Uh, there was a, this group of physicians who were trying to advance emergency medicine, trying to become a recognized training pathway within the Royal College, and ultimately uh, <clears throat> uh, they succeeded sometime around 1980, maybe it was 79, sometime in that general era. And I guess around the same time, uh, it was a bad time for family medicine. I think family physicians uh, were losing their role in many parts of the system. They were being forced out of hospitals. Uh, they were not appreciated um, nearly enough in acute care settings. And I think uh, the College of Family Physicians wanted to maintain a foothold in the hospital and in acute care medicine. Uh, there's a lot of family physicians who work in non-urban settings or smaller community settings where they would have to function in emergency departments uh, and provide emergency care and so would need a higher level of uh, emergency medicine knowledge and training. So I think the concept was to have this uh, group of primarily family physicians who had emergency medicine skills that could function at high levels in emergency departments. The question was then, how, how do you certify emergency medicine? And this was, there was many years of debate and there were specialty committees uh, formed between the two colleges. And eventually it was agreed that emergency medicine would be a, uh, a specialty, a conjoint specialty. But you had to have a specialty cert certification, prior certification either as a family physician or as a specialist. And the vast majority of uh, currently practicing emergency physicians in Canada at that time had neither. And so all these experienced individuals would be excluded by that particular approach. And that was rejected and both colleges agreed, all right, then we can't do it together and both decided to do it individually and on their own. Once the recognition occurred, and once the first few sets of exams had passed, the recognized need for these people grew, and in fact, in fact it became a standard of care, that you had to have people who were certified and talented working in the ER, or you weren't meeting an appropriate standard of care. Back in the late 70s, I can recall meeting with uh, a group of physicians who I hadn't met, people like Dennis Sutka and Al Schultz and David Walker and Rocco Gerace, and we saw the need there to get physicians to start to work together. Physicians who really didn't see themselves as family physicians, who really wanted to uh, be emergency physicians, but wanted to um, set standards and uh, lobby for a better running of emergency departments around the country. So that was the nidus of the group back in the late 70s and that's how, uh, how 
came to the Association of Emergency Physicians, which first started. I can still uh, vividly remember receiving a letter about the formation of CAPE. I think it was in the fall of 1978. I was working as a locum doctor in Sydney, Australia at the time, and I was quite excited and joined right away uh, because I thought this was marvelous that we'd be having our own association for emergency medicine. There was a definite significant need and an altruistic streak in a number of physicians who said, we can make this better. The standard of care doesn't have to be like this. So one of the ways you do that is you bond with a group of like-minded people and you create a, a force, a vector that says to the powers that be like the colleges, we need to address this. And now you have a collective group of assembled people who know lots about it, who can drive your thinking and, to, and can help you make good decisions about what that standard of care ought to be. And that, the second reason CAPE came along is because we needed a forum to share that information across a very large country. There was always going to be people who want to be exclusive. We only want specialists, people who've got Royal College certification. Um, but I believed when I was president that what we were representing was not really emergency physicians, but emergency medicine. And therefore, anybody who was working in the emergency department should belong to CAPE that that was very important to me. And although I was a specialist in emergency medicine who was the president of CAPE, the immediate president after me was a family physician by the name of Al Drummond. And I think that embodiment of what the two of us believed what CAPE should be and represent was there because Al was a family physician doing emergency medicine. I was a Royal College person doing emergency medicine. And we believe that whether you are Royal College certified, whether you are CCFPEM, or whether you're a family physician who does it in a small rural community, if you're practicing in emergency departments, you're practicing emergency medicine. The number of emergency physicians who now practice in the field uh, are so much larger than when I started. We were just uh, new on the scene. We were just interns, residents who were trying to establish a specialty. Now we have a group of emergency physicians across the country who, with whom we can interact, with whom we can exchange ideas, uh, look towards uh, research, better patient care, uh, more political clout. Uh, this, this, is, this is very important and I think uh, CAPE is the organization that's allowed us to bring these physicians together.